Hello, everybody. I, uh... <laughs> I don't know. I was trying to film this a minute ago and something went wrong. It just stopped in the middle of me having all these beautiful thoughts and sharing them. And then also it started to get really busy for some reason, even though it's in the middle of a weekday or the middle of the week. And it just all of a sudden I started getting more interruptions when I was just trying to film. So, uh, anyway, moving on. I just thought that I would share a, a little bit of a story um, behind the very first most significant art project that I ever made. I wouldn't even call it an art project. It was, it feels like it had so much more behind it and it had, it has a ton of meaning to me. So, um, also I feel I'm dressed up kind of today because I was trying out a new idea. And, yes, anyway, uh, so I just thought I would show you, it's kind of like show and tell, but I'll show you, and I'm going to try my best to not accidentally hit the wrong button. Please don't burn. <laughs> so, uh, this piece was the very first major point in me expressing my creativity. And the story behind it basically goes that Sorry about that, I got an alarm. Anyway, I, uh, this was the first major point when I started to really express my creativity naturally. And the story behind it was that, uh, we had, I had an art teacher when I was a sophomore in high school and I was 16 and they had us do a project based around English literature, poetry, an author of our choosing. And I don't remember the exact details of the assignment, just that part. And I was a, what you might call quietly rebellious. I felt that I wanted to do something different. And instead of just writing a paper, I would make it into, I would take it beyond that into more art forms. And I chose to make this sculpture, um, with the inspiration coming from Walt Whitman. And the reason I chose Walt Whitman is because in a lot of his work, he speaks on, in his greatest work, he speaks on the forest and the importance of living in the forest and what impact it had on him. And I felt like that really resonated with me because I was raised in the woods not too wild. We were a couple of miles away from a civilized place, but we were still very much in the wilderness and we had, we were right next, me and my family 
We lived in a home, deep in the woods, peaceful and quiet, idyllic by every sense of the word, close to a river, a wild river, and close to the range of mountains, not only, not just merely a couple of miles away in what I would call an ultimate paradise that was self-sustaining and life-affirming. And I feel growing up in a beautiful forested, quiet area, full of life and just ancient magical energy, as I would put it, was something that shaped a big part of me. And not only was that present in this art piece that I did, um, it also symbolically represented a collaborative work and effort on the part of my family, who in that great moment supported me by helping me gather the materials, inspiring me to and take my ideas further. And it was the one great, one great moment where I hold a dear memory of my family coming together to support one of their own loved ones. And I love that idea because everyone, I think, deserves a family, whether it's uh, soul family, someone not biologically related, but closely bonded with you, uh, people who are in your corner and have your back. And in my case, it was my biological family. And I hold a lot of beauty and sentimentality around this piece. And I'm going to read off some of the quotes written on it and talk a bit more about it in a second. But that was definitely a huge thing for me. And I also, I, what came of it was interesting because that was also a very important lesson for me because what I did is I brought it to class and everyone else had all their papers and I honestly sometimes I feel a bit guilty that I chose to do this because I don't know if it maybe wasn't fair to the other classmates <laughs> or just plain awkward. I don't know, but I remember doing the project and talking about it and then my teacher failed me for that project and I was stunned. And then I, I think what I learned from that is that when you have something that means a lot to you, whether or not it's good, you may have to understand that not everyone is going to get it right away and that if it holds meaning for you it's important and it will make sense and I think that's actually the entire point of art because you have something to say with it in all forms and mediums music dance um protest <laughs> I don't know any form that means something to you and has a channel for your expression not everyone's going to get it right away and that's okay you may even feel like you bombed and it was a ridiculous thing to even try but with all the great artists that we love and know for me it's definitely van gogh um, and a couple of others but van gogh frida kahlo not everyone got their voice right away in their work and sadly some of them passed before they could know just how beautiful their work is and how much it means to the world but that inherently in and of itself the idea that you created something is more than okay and more than enough and it teaches valuable um, truths about that I feel that art at least in this piece alone represents peace and truth and wisdom and uh, 
it represents sentimentally for me the moment when I truly realized just how much I love the people I love in my life. And I never forgot it. And to this day, up until recently, it's been hanging in my parents' uh, home in a place that we call the green room, which is our social gathering room, um, where we get a full view of the forest. And it's hanging next to a large array of books and old games and just stacks of books on the floor. <laughs> in a very, it, it seems like a fitting place for it, but I forgot all about it until recently when I came over to visit my parents at their, at our childhood home. And I live in a different place, so I, I drive out and I see them. And I looked at it and I went, oh, yeah, I forgot all about that. And then I realized that as I was looking it over, it was almost like my younger self, my teenage self was looking into the future and going, this piece is going to be important for reflection. And it is, and I, it just hit home as I was looking at it and going, I forgot all about the kind of person I was before my own difficulties happened. And now that I'm circling back to remembering who I truly was, it's there in my sight and I'm ready to to think on it and what it means not only to me but to my family and I hope one day um, I get to speak more on it and I'm filming a video about it now but it would be wonderful to share that story in case it helps somebody so by the way, I'm in a peaceful, quiet place. If you want to take a peek with me, let me show you. It felt right. I tried to go to this other quiet place that I have. I have several. Um, but no, it was crowded. And f it was very funny because this is a wooded, quiet area that I went to. And it's normally pretty quiet. But great timing. Everybody decided to be there in the middle of the week. <laughs> It, at night, it's nighttime by the way, but I chose my other quiet place and I wanted to show you. So let me take you a bit around and show you what's going on here. And I have to move this cord, hold on. I don't know if you can see. But there's some geese. I'll have to post the video. Um, I took another video before this one like right before so that I could just uh, give you a better shot and show you something, a place that I like to go on occasion. Lately I've been too busy, but uh, I came back for the first time in months because I heard that the flowers were blooming here and it just, it's so quiet and there's this shimmering pond and beautiful daisies, which I love and Canada geese just walking around. Um, this is a, I understand that this place, and I used to actually spend a lot of time here. Um, it's a refuge for Canada geese. They come here and they rest, and then when the season comes, they migrate, but they often come here in large groups. So back to this project, I thought I would just kind of give you guys a closer look. Oh goodness. <laughs> I, I'm trying to avoid getting it in the wrong place here. Let me just
So there's a card and I'll read what's on the card. But basically there's different elements here that are extremely important. As you can see, there's a pebbles from, um, I believe it was the edge of our forest from where the property went into the woods. And then some fishing line and fishing lures from my dad's tackle box. Let me just show you. I think that's one of my favorite elements of this whole thing, as detailed as it is. My mother knew that I loved shiny and glittery things, which I still do to this day. <laughs> you can see. Uh, I put and so she, and I loved birds too. I loved studying birds as a little girl. So I have that uh, from my mother who found it for me, just in some old decorations and this piece of, um, I think it's boating twine. I, th I think that's what it is. And then I have quotes from Walt Whitman that I hand wrote all over it. Uh, and this ower that we used to use for practice when I think I recall once or twice me and my siblings learned how to canoe. And I remember I used this at least once and then we just never did because our family was always busy just being a large family. <laughs> But this was part of that. And then on the back, let me see if I can tip this carefully. There's my initials and the date. And the card keeps falling off because it's so, it's been a long time and I haven't replaced the tape yet. But I keep just sticking it back on. Eleven twenty-two oh four. No, wow. So it, this was actually when I was a freshman. I was 15, I was 15 years old. So, I'll read you, there's a lot of quotes on here. I'll read you at least a couple of my favorites. So, the one in the center says, I went to live in the woods because I wished to live deliberately, to front the essential facts of life and see if I could not learn what it had to teach and not when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. The card itself has a piece of fishing line in it that I fastened into the card. The page number, it says page 291, final paragraph. I can't remember what book. It's been a long time since I read any serious literature. Uh, I just, I just remember this is a definite, I think this is Walt Whitman for sure in this card. I used exclusively his quotes. I do not say that John or Jonathan will realize all this, but such is the character of that morrow, which mere lapse of time can never make to dawn. The light which puts out our eyes is darkness to us. Only that day dawns to wake. There is more day to dawn. The sun is but a morning star. And then the initials HDF. I think it's F. I had it written in cursive. So. Oh, yes. And then on the ower, I thought this was an interesting one. When I first paddled a boat on Walden, it was completely surrounded by thick and lofty pine and oak woods. And then I wrote in red, 
hermit alone. Now I remember <laughs> being a considered the weird kid and I can see why. I was not, I was what you might label strange and um, be quick to judge if you didn't know or stop to understand. I just had all of these different ideas that were still forming for me and I definitely just, I wasn't sure of how to let them out until this moment. And this came off as odd and I can understand why. But one day, should I have an art gallery or just some form of expression of art that is mine to express my voice? This will be centrally located with the story on it. It will take a central place of honor and then people can learn about it and uh, maybe it will be positive and it will affect them in a way that helps them express their voice too. And I think that that has a lot of importance it offers freedom, excuse me, I have a dry throat, but it offers a lot of freedom. And I just think that art is freedom and love is freedom and the three go together very much so. So for right now, that's everything. I'm gonna go back to the store <laughs> and go shopping for ingredients so I can make burritos uh, I might film that video, but we'll see. I thought of making chicken California style burritos and some salmon burritos, which are inspired by a restaurant here. Uh, and I always thought they were extremely good. So maybe I'll make a video about that too. But thank you so much for listening and I hope you have a wonderful day.